Today, I'm going to install Proxmox on an old HP Compact Pro desktop. Proxmox is an open source virtualization management solution. It has a web-based user interface, which makes it easier and intuitive to manage virtual machines. Virtual machines that can provide high availability clusters, storage, and networks. A virtual machine is pretty much like a physical machine, but it does not require, or at least only requires a fraction of the physical hardware that it would normally use. Rather, it relies on a software-based version of a computer. A PC running virtualization can run virtual machines or VMs with different operating systems that are independent of each other. So why do we need VMs? Mainly because we save on resources running VMs of applications like Nextcloud, Jellyfin, Navidrome, Mstream, Portainer, Open Media Vault, and TrueNAS, to name a few. I can also install OpenSense or PFSense for my firewall and routing needs. Before I install Proxmox, I will first have to clean up the old HP PC and upgrade storage to SSD. Five and a quarter hard drives are bulky and would consume more energy spinning up the disks, so I decided on SSDs. I was initially going to add SSDs without any mounting hardware, just add some zip ties or double sided tape maybe. I'm just kidding. Zip ties should totally work, uh, but I thought spending on some kind of system would add order to the chaos inside the PC. So I decided I will also take this time to add an IC Doc 6 bay hot swappable cage for the SSDs to live in. It's got six individual trays with locks. Only thing I was iffy about this is the fact that the whole tray is made of plastic. I was hoping it would be made of metal for rigidity or at least a combination of both. Of course we have the installation guide, some screws. At the back there are two 40 millimeter fans to pull in cold air two SATA power connectors, and six SATA data ports. There's also a selector switch for the fan speed for high, low, and auto. To add to the total RAM of my would-be server to 8 gigs, I will install 4 gigs of RAM I've harvested from another computer. To add more storage and fully utilize the IC Dock 6 bay cage, I will install the PCIe to, to SATA adapter so I can add more SSDs to the server. Lastly, I will also add a 4-port NIC. Luckily, the HP Compaq has enough PCIe slots to accommodate both adapters. The NIC that I got is an Intel i340-T4. I also used SATA cables I got from Amazon, which are sleeved. This will help with the ease in routing cables and make things neat and tidy inside the PC. They also have locks, which will add to the security in the connections. Let's finish installing the hardware.
Now that we're done with the hardware, it's time to deal with the software. Installing Proxmox should be the same as installing other Linux distros. We will need the USB drive, Balena Etcher, or Rufus, so we can flash the Proxmox image to the USB drive. Download Proxmox VE 8.0 ISO installer. Once completed, verify the integrity of your download by comparing the hash of your download to the hash that's provided on the Proxmox website. To do this on Windows, run PowerShell as admin, then run the script in the description below. The last part of the script will be the location on your computer where you saved the ISO image that you just downloaded. Running the script will provide you a hash that you can compare to the one that's on the Proxmox website. If everything is good, we can proceed with writing the image on the USB drive. I will be using Balena Etcher for this. Once complete, plug in the USB drive on the would-be server, then boot. Make sure booting to the USB drive is, is enabled. Once the computer boots up, follow the prompts required for the setup. After the installation is complete, the computer will restart. Make sure to remove the USB drive to avoid booting back to the installation media. You should end up with a screen like this that shows the IP address of your Proxmox server. On a separate browser, type in the IP address of the Proxmox server. You may get something like this page, that your connection is not private. This is normal and it's fine. Click on Advanced and click Proceed. Now Proxmox is initializing. This process may take some time, so just be patient. Once it's done, you will get a login prompt. Use the username root and the password you entered earlier during the install. Now we're ready to create virtual machines on our Proxbox server. But before I do that, I would like to run a few scripts that to me are useful. On the Proxmox web GUI, click on shell, then enter the script you wish to run. I'll be running post install and dark theme scripts. These are optional, but useful and you can run as many helper scripts as you wish. On the next installment, I will create VMs, probably Tails, PFSense, and the Windows VM. I hope you enjoyed and found this useful. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.